Let's talk about the challenges and constraints um, of embedded systems um, because these, um, these can make some differences to what you can do. Now there are some special characteristics of uh, embedded systems or the, the, um, the kind of systems which are solved with embedded systems. They're designed to do some specific task. They're not a general purpose uh, task. Uh, there usually is some specific thing that we want done and we want a device to do that as cheaply and as efficiently as we possibly can. Uh, this may be because uh, there's going to be thousands of them and so I mean, um, uh, increase in cost over um, each unit would add up so we, we want it um, cheap as possible. It could be because of uh, size restrictions uh, or it could be for some other reason. Um, some of them have uh, some real-time performance constraints and, and some of them don't. Some of them doesn't matter too much what the performance is. But in general, we want to get the smallest, um, least powerful um, system possible. And if we have to design specific hardware to do that, then okay, we can do that. Now, embedded systems are not always standalone devices. There is the example there of the uh, Gibson robotic guitar where the, device, the whole the, the electronics of the system is intended to, to tune the guitar on the fly. Now, all right, it's an embedded system, but it's not a standalone system. It's part of the guitar, not a guitar tuning system on, on its own. And so that's part of it. Um, the systems in, in a car are not there for their own sake. The whole purpose of a car is to have a car and drive a car. Uh, the embedded system becomes part of that larger system of uh, providing transport. The program instructions uh, for uh, embedded systems frequently referred to as firmware, and you you can dig into that if you if you want. Uh, the distinction is that these may be instructions that are necessarily tied up with some physical device, such as a. Um, um, a gate array or a, a programmable logic device um, and these, this is not quite software and not quite hardware, it's firmware. And usually, oddly enough, um, this falls to the lot of the engineer to program um, the device because originally they weren't that complicated. Unfortunately for the engineers concerned, uh, these are getting much more complicated and, and uh, when you're getting into telecommunication devices frequently the, um, the software uh, that goes onto the, um, the modules concerned, the hardware modules, can be a couple of million lines of code. Now we're no longer in the area of um, small systems that are just, oh well you know an engineer can do it in his spare time. Now we're getting to serious programming. Embedded systems usually also have some constraints. Uh, first among them is frequently the uh, computing power, the CPU power is limited. Uh, and you may be using a specialized CPU uh, simply because it's adapted to that particular uh, domain or task. Um, and they're manufactured in bulk uh, specifically to keep them cheaper. A very good example of this are uh, the specific chips that are used for particular telecommunication protocols. I do remember that when uh, the telecommunication company I was with was um, designing new telecommunications hardware to deal with the most recent and fastest um, uh, telecommunication protocol, they uh, bought specific chips uh, that were designed for that protocol to be the control um, the control chips on that module, so there was specific hardware um, for it. It happened that they were a fairly sizable computer in its own right, uh, not massive but fairly, fairly high. There usually is, not necessarily, but usually is constrained memory, and again this is, this is done to go away. There's limited uh, or low uh, power, uh, frequently because it's, it's battery provided and there's a limited amount of it. And there's usually a limited user interface. Um, this is because if you've got an embedded system, the whole thing is designed to be put away somewhere and there's just no, no interface to it. Now, that also is going away as um, uh, frequently these things have enough, um, uh, enough capacity to connect across the internet and uh, the interface is, is on the client, not on the device. 
But the note is that things are getting better. Some embedded systems are being designed with a web interface, uh, allowing user access through a separate device, so you, you get the client and server. An example of this is uh, most frequently the, um, the modems that you get these days basically have just, just blinking lights. And the interface itself is provided when you connect through uh, either through the internet or through a, um, a specific um, uh, cable, network cable. Uh, some devices come with a debugging channel. Um, the, the chip I was mentioning before that we used for the uh, communication protocol that had a separate debugging channel into it so it was you know you weren't dealing with anything crude and special purpose devices will normally be used as an economic choice um, they're cheaper and faster than a general purpose device now when I'm talking about the the processing power of these things here's a reasonable comparison the iPhone 4 is about as powerful as the Cray 2 supercomputer was, or is. Now the Cray 2 came out in about 1992 or 1993, and the iPhone 4 came out, um, when was that, in say 2010 or something like that. But the difference is the iPhone 4 is a portable device, uh, a consumer device, costs less than $1,000. The Cray 2 cost millions and um, I think it was cooled with um, liquid freon and, and yeah, it really was a supercomputer at the time. So uh, in terms of uh, available power, there's getting much more power becoming available on much smaller devices. Now some of the challenges of embedded systems, consider the following scenario. You've got uh, essentially an army of robots and you're deploying them into some remote territory, possibly the moon, possibly Mars, uh, you, you, uh, you have a communication delay. They are to a certain degree autonomous. Um, now they need to be able to, to act in autonomously to some degree. Now this is quite a challenge to do. Um, we will see if you, if you uh, watch the, um, the segment on um, operating systems there I talk about the uh, architecture of autonomous systems, intelligent autonomous systems. So we'll talk a bit about that there. But it is a challenge and it's not something that the average um, engineering shop can manage easily. So the summary there for this one is that embedded systems are usually special purpose systems they, there are constraints usually on uh, computing power, memory, uh, battery power, um, and frequently the limited instruction sets. You have as much instructions as you need, but no more. But the good news is that things are getting less constrained. Uh, more and more um, embedded device chips are becoming quite, quite powerful machines in their own right.